Hello everyone and welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 4 of our 3D Maze series which we're making on Scratch 3. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Just finished coding. Now I have to interject here that if you've not watched parts 1 to 3, um, please watch them before you come here because as you can see I'm picking up from where I left off and for this video to make sense you need to have watched the previous ones. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch the videos and then come right back. If you're still here I'm going to assume that you've watched parts 1 to 3. In which case, in this video, we'll be rigging up the graphic character of the player so you will be able to move your player around or at least get the illusion of doing so by the end of this video. So to start off, I'm going to make a quick change within my main player sprite and I'm going to set the speed to 5 and the turn to 10. And once we do that and we hit the green flag, you should have slightly more smoother controls with regard to your movement because earlier it was quite a bit erratic. Alright, so once you're done with this, it's time to import the graphic player. So click on upload sprite and you want to navigate through your folders, click on graphic player and just open the first one. I will rename this guy to be graphic player and this is a fairly simple um, 3D looking player. It's obviously 2D but it gives the illusion of the guy being 3D. Um, now you can see that the size is obviously too big so I'm going to reset the size here to be 50 so that he's a little bit more to scale and I will also do that within my code um, but I'm going to delay that for now I may um, do it a little bit later. So now let me go to the costumes and um, and get all the other files which I need to have to have a complete animation and you can just select all of them and open them at once. Alright so there we go that's going to be a fairly simple walking, mo uh, walking motion and what I'm going to do is when the green flag is clicked I will be having for this sprite just like the others a block so I'm going to make a new block and I'm going to call this block in its sprite and you can run this block without screen refresh and that should work fine. So I will call this after the green flag is clicked and within this I will first set my size to 50% because 100% is way too big. Um, I will also go to this particular position so you can see go to x go to y and x is going to be right at the center of the screen and y is going to be negative 80. So he's kind of at the bottom uh, center. Okay, so now after you're done with this, um, you can grab this one block from the um, looks category and say switch costume to one. And that is pretty much all I'll be doing as of now. I think I do have something to add on a little bit later, but um, I'll leave that for, um, uh, I'll do that when the time comes. So um, let's enter into a forever loop after we init the sprite. And each of these times I'll be having a when key is pressed. So when I'm going to start off with left key is pressed. And this is when it's just going to get easier to use a block. And do not run without screen refresh this time. I'm just going to call it move. You can call it animate because that's what we're really doing. Um, but within this move we're going to have repeat four different times. And we will just be switching the costume by one each time. And a shortcut for that is just say next costume. And that is pretty much it. Now you can just throw in that block within the left arrow keys pressed and you can duplicate this four different times. So we can do that for the right arrow, we can do that for the up arrow and we can do that for the down arrow as well. So if we have all this set up and now we um, run the code once, um, you can see that we have a fairly simple motion on the screen and the player looks pretty decent. And as you can see, obviously, you know, gets into the um, gets into the maze and that leads us into all sorts of problems. But we will be fixing that within our, uh, I think it's within our dot and we'll make sure that the player is limited to his motion and he cannot literally go through the maze. Um, but as of now, this is what you will need to have. So now we can head over to the variables category and make a new variable. And I'm going to call this variable move and that's going to be a Boolean variable. So I'm going to add in a question mark. Um, now we can head over to the main player once again and here we will set move to be yes and um, what this move is going to do is if it's set to yes then it's going to mean that well we can move the actual player and by the uh, actual player I mean this dot or the sprite which I'm um, on right now and um, it's going to go through the distances list and see if a particular distance is um, less than a particular amount 
And if it is, then it means the player is too close to the maze. And as a result, we're not going to allow him to move and we'll just move back. So that's going to be the idea of that. And um, you can head over to the dot variable and here you can make a new block. And I'm going to run this without screen refresh because it needs to be done quite fast. And this is called checklist. Okay, very simple. And we will be um, using this block um, after we find the distances, but before we draw. So within checklist, it's going to be quite simple. Actually, we will be setting a move to be yes first. So um, set move to yes. And after this, we will enter into a repeat until loop. And um, the reason I'm using repeat until loop is because it may save a bit of time. And I will also create a, a counter variable and I guess I'll just use the same one. So I will set C um, to one and I will repeat until and you need to grab an or condition here. Um, within this or condition, we'll first say either C is greater than, so repeat until C is greater than the length of the distances list, which means that there is no um, there is no item which we haven't scanned. And you can grab this block which says item of distances and oops, Z actually not item of distances. Um, we, uh, we need to say um, length of distances. You could alternatively just say field of view because the length of distances is always going to be field of view. Um, but I just think this is better. So we can have this in place and or um, we'll just be saying move is equal to no. And if the move is set to no, then it automatically means that some wall is too close. And as a result, we don't even have to continue scanning the rest of the list. So uh, we can just say all oh, movie equals no. And within this, we can have a simple if then, uh, if then. So grab an if then. And after this if then, we will change C by one. So within this if then, you can have a simple checker. So you can say if um, the item of distances and you can grab this block, which I wanted to use um, initially instead of this list. And uh, you can just say um, if item C of distances is um, less than 10. And if it is less than 10, it means the wall is too close. And um, depending on, you know, the wall um, height, which we've set up in the Raycaster here, you may want to change the values. So if you're using the same values as I'm using, then 10 should work perfectly for you. So you can have this in place. And if this happens, then we can just set the move variable to no. And if we set the move variable to no, it means it's automatically going to stop repeating. And since move is no, it's going to get out of this loop. Um, I'm going to add in one more line of code here before we get into the main player. And I will say if, um, if move is yes, and only if move is yes, am I going to continue? And if it's not yes, there's no point of drawing because we don't want to draw it and we just want to get back. So we wouldn't really want any changes on the screen if the move variable is no. So if move is yes, then we draw, but it's also important to go back to the player and make sure he gets back to the correct position. Because if we just allow the player to move in front, but don't draw anything, then the player is going to have a different position and things will change erratically and chaotically when we, um, uh, when we perform a valid move um, afterward. So after we broadcast and wait, um, we can have a simple if else condition. So we'll say first, if last is equal to B, it means the last step was backward then we will move by speed steps. Then we can say if last was equal to F, then we would not move by speed steps, but by zero minus speed steps. Um, now we can say if last is equal to um, is equal to L, I believe. I think L was for left, but I'm not entirely sure. So I do have to check that out. Yup, it was L. Um, in that case, what I will do is I will move to the right because I need to do the exact opposite thing um, for uh, when we're going back to our original position. So I will say this and I think I forgot to change it within uh, last and you just have to move by speed, ste uh, speed steps if last was, I'm sorry, this was incorrect. You'd have to move by speed steps if last was B, but I, I just kind of got confused there, Never mind. So we will turn by clockwise degrees if the last move was L. And lastly, if the last move was F, uh, I'm sorry, if the last move was R, then it means we have to, we turned right. And as a result, to get back to the same position, we need to turn left. So if you run this, uh, the code now, and okay, I seem to have accidentally pressed one of my keys 
and I'm just swiveling around so I will have to fix this quickly and then I will be right back. Okay, so it took me quite a bit of time to find the box but I eventually did come to it and as it turned out there were two. So first of all, we wouldn't want to do any of this unless the move variable was set to no because if we're moving fine and we're within the maze, then we obviously wouldn't want to start changing our position. And that was exactly what was hap uh, happening. So we were, um, we were just going through this and since last was null, we ha uh, it wasn't B, it wasn't F, it wasn't L and thus the player was just turning anti-clockwise for no reason at all. So to fix that, you can just add in another if then condition here and you can put all of this within that if condition and that condition is simply going to be that if move is equal to no, only then will we go through all of this. And I also made a second mistake here where I set move to zero instead of no, which kind of defeated the purpose and that is pretty much all you need to do. So now let's press the green flag and as you can see, we are limited in our movement and the player can't literally just go through any of the walls and he's all set within his motion path. And I'm gonna end this video right here. In the next video, we'll get into the exits and how to make sure the player is um, able to finish the game. And in the last video, we'll probably get into how you can set up your timer and also your high score. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.